Just under two years ago, NASA ushered in a new era of spaceflight, providing a dedicated ride to space for small satellites, small sats, also called CubeSats, microsats, or nanosatellites, that are quickly becoming a game changer for science and exploration. NASA is building on this capability with the launch of 10 more CubeSats. Virgin Orbit's Cosmic Girl aircraft and Launcher 1 rocket rose to the challenge, a perfect match for a host of small satellites with big goals. Well, like everybody, I've long been a huge fan of NASA ever since I was a very small child with some very big ideas. And like me, they believe in the power of innovation, constantly pushing the boundaries of what's possible. Their bold, adventurous spirit is inspiring, and we couldn't be more honored to work by their side for this mission. The NASA payload about to launch on the Launcher 1 rocket is called ALANA-20. ALANA stands for Educational Launch of Nanosatellites, part of NASA's CubeSat Launch Initiative, or CSLI. Through CSLI, 10 CubeSats were selected for this mission, and it's the first payload complement ever carried by Launcher 1 one of two Venture-class vehicles NASA chose to give CubeSats, and CubeSats alone, a ride to space. The CubeSat Launch Initiative, or CSLI, provides free or reduced cost launches for eligible and worthy CubeSats developed by academic institutions, nonprofit organizations, and NASA centers. The Launch Services Program at the Kennedy Space Center is responsible for launching CSLI-selected CubeSats into space. We match satellites with rockets. The group of satellites that we fly on a given rocket is called an ALANA mission, which stands for Educational Launch of Nanosatellites. The CubeSats launched aboard the Virgin Orbit Launcher 1 were all part of the ALANA 20 mission. Rockets dedicated to small satellites mean expanded access to space and orbital deployments tailor-made to each CubeSat's science goals. Most of these CubeSats can be compared to the size of a loaf of bread, but some were even smaller, about the size of a softball. Sponsored by NASA, they were developed by universities across the nation, as well as one NASA center. Cactus One was developed by Capital Technology University in Laurel, Maryland. Built entirely by undergraduate students, it's a tabbed 3U CubeSat with two technology demonstrations on board. The first, TrapSat, uses aerogel to capture and profile space debris in low Earth orbit for cleanup. The other, Hermes, aims to send commands and communication to the satellite via the internet, providing a cost-saving system for gathering scientific data. Uh, if you were to do a coolness bingo, uh, we pretty much tick off all the boxes because <laughs> we're doing orbital debris using aerogel with a Raspberry Pi programmed in Python that we released as open source able to send texts to and from the satellite using internet, student conceived for under $30,000 using the new CubeSat tab uh, format instead of Rails. So I think that's like a double cross and bingo there. Passive Inspection CubeSats, or PICS for short, are twin satellites developed by Brigham Young University in Provo, Utah. Each one has tiny cameras on all sides to capture imagery of each other, as well as Launcher One in action. So we had the idea to use a CubeSat that is inert, has no capability to maneuver itself, but has cameras on all, on all sides, sort of like a VR camera, so that it could, regardless of tumble, image the spacecraft that deploys it. Uh, essentially, it's like a, a selfie camera for Launcher 1 or any other spacecraft. While many of the satellites flying on this mission are technology demonstrations, there are a few focusing strictly on science. QPACE stands for CubeSat Particle Aggregation and Collision Experiment. Developed by the University of Central Florida in Orlando, Florida, QPACE will study the collision of various sized particles and particle clusters in space. This three-year experiment will give insight into a process researchers hope to study not only within our own solar system, but around other stars as well. A satellite that's carrying a microgravity experiment that uh, explores the gentle collisions between small particles that are the very first steps of the formation of planets. We're hoping to better understand the processes of planet formation, uh, not just in our own solar system, but around other stars. Polar Cube, 
Developed by the University of Colorado at Boulder is another scientific mission. This one is aimed at collecting sea ice concentration and atmospheric temperature data for future scientific studies and applications. And it can actually go through different layers of the troposphere, and so we can get a large profile of the actual temperature through the atmosphere and get an understanding of different weather phenomena based off of that. Some of the CubeSats flying on Alana 20 are a continuation in a series of missions. TechEdSat 7 is the seventh in a series of satellites from NASA's Ames Research Center in California's Silicon Valley. The primary technology demonstration aboard TechEdSat 7 involves commanding the satellite to quickly re-enter Earth's atmosphere after 60 days in orbit, validating a new braking device. Yeah, so what's really cool about the TechEdSat series is that it's not just one satellite, it's progression, and it has two main purposes. The primary experiment is a deployable drag device known as the exobrake for targeted re-entry, and then the other main purpose is a bus uh, for other payloads. So other external companies or other teams at NASA can contract to us, bring their payload onto our spacecraft, and uh, we kind of work as a bus ride for them. While students, engineers, and researchers are preparing their CubeSats for launch, Virgin Orbit is hard at work readying its Launcher 1 rocket for flight. Launcher 1 is a two-staged, expendable rocket roughly 70 feet in length. It attaches to the underside of the company's 747 aircraft, Cosmic Girl. On launch day, the rocket is designed to release from the left wing for a controlled drop over the Pacific Ocean. Once it's safely away from the plane, the rocket's first stage engine will ignite, beginning the launch sequence to send the satellites on board into low Earth orbit. Launcher 1 is manufactured at Virgin Orbit's facility in Long Beach, California. Then five months prior to launch, the rocket takes its first journey, a short trip to the desert landscape of the Mojave Air and Spaceport, just a little under two hours away. Here, it goes through rounds of critical pre-launch tests and checkouts. With testing complete, it goes back to Long Beach for final integration before returning to Mojave for launch. Around the same time, CubeSats begin arriving at Virgin Orbit's processing facility, also in Long Beach, to be packed into the rocket's payload fairing. ExoCube 2 is the progression of a satellite developed by California Polytechnic State University in San Luis Obispo, California. A mass spectrometer on board the spacecraft will measure the density of particles in the exosphere to improve space weather prediction. Space isn't just a pure vacuum. There's always some particles up there. And the particles impact various you know, things with space weather, how the sun you know, rays actually get to the Earth, how the sun rays impact various spacecraft. Um, and so understanding the particle composition helps us do better space weather prediction. RAD affects that too will study space radiation effects on various types of commercial off-the-shelf memory, including the same type of memory used in cell phones and laptops. The experiment is led by Vanderbilt University in Nashville, Tennessee, but it's flying on a CubeSat developed by AMSAT, a nonprofit organization of volunteers who build satellites with amateur radios. AMSAT is also launching its own payload on this satellite. It will test a design for two-way amateur radio communications, and the data gathered from the experiment and the satellite itself will be available for anyone in the world with amateur radio access. What I really like about this is the educational component, and it goes, reaches out to adults and children as they learn about amateur radio, but especially when kids first are given the opportunity to experience talking through a satellite as it's put, and they're like, wow, I talked to somebody through a satellite. You know, that's bingo, that's the paycheck. CAPE-3 is the third satellite in the CAPE series of educational missions developed by the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. CAPE-3 has two missions, with the primary mission focused on grades K through 12, bringing interactive experiments to the classroom by using an experimental smartphone ground station grid. Teachers can download the CAPE-3 app on their phone and with a radio board and antenna, send little commands to the satellite and receive a response. The final payload that will be carried by Launcher One is the Mighty Technology Demonstration from the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. The mission involves a main body satellite and an attached PicoSci satellite, or PicoSat, 
to investigate and prove electrodynamic tether applications in space. After launch, the two satellites will deploy from one another. The tether connecting the two will generate a magnetic field that can interact with Earth's magnetic field to keep them in orbit. If proven, these tethers could allow large groups of satellites to function like a coordinated, controllable fleet. As satellites decrease in size, the orbital lifetimes um, decreases very rapidly, so you need a way to keep your satellite in space. And the electrodynamic tether provides us a um, propellantless um, method of station keeping and uh, propulsion in space. By November 2020, each of the 10 CubeSats is safely secured in Launcher 1's payload bearing. Now, everything is in Virgin Orbit's hands. The fairing makes the short trip from the company's processing facility in California to the nearby Mojave Air and Spaceport, where it's mated to the rocket ahead of launch. After wet dress rehearsals and final reviews, Launcher 1 is deemed ready to fly. January 17, 2021. Launcher 1 and Cosmic Girl are positioned for takeoff. At approximately 1.38 p.m. Eastern, the carrier aircraft takes to the sky. At 35,000 feet above the Pacific Ocean, the rocket is released from Cosmic Girl, and then its Newton 3 first stage engine ignites, sending the rocket on its way. Just a few minutes later, the second stage Newton 4 engine performs a series of burns to power Launcher 1 into low Earth orbit. Approximately two hours after takeoff, the Alana 20 CubeSats are deployed successfully. CubeSats have demonstrated their ability to meet science, technology development, and educational objectives in a very cost-effective way. I believe that the demand for CubeSats will only grow in the future. The CubeSat Launch Initiative and the Launch Services Program both look forward to being there to help put those CubeSats into orbit. With dedicated rides to space, these CubeSats are unlocking the potential for a brighter future, one filled with greater scientific discoveries, increased access to space, and just maybe, a knowledge of new worlds. To get involved in NASA's CubeSat Launch Initiative, visit nasa.gov forward slash CubeSats.